Hi, I'm Herrick the Mildly Perturbed, game designer and 20-year veteran of AmpGuard and other LARPs. AmpGuard is my LARP of choice, and as it transitions from its 8th version to version 9, I wanted to do a video essay series about the game design of AmpGuard and how I think it can improve. I'll be addressing a major element of the game's design that can improve in each video. So, without further ado, I'm Herrick the Mildly Perturbed, and this is putting it mildly. To put it mildly, armor in Antguard has a problem. Among players with armor proficiency, not everyone actually wears armor. That makes sense, it's heavy and it's expensive. So you want to reward the players who choose to wear armor. But then you have a problem. If a player's class is balanced on the assumption that they're wearing armor, then the class is going to be underpowered if you choose not to wear it. But if you balance the class on the assumption that a player isn't going to wear the armor, then any player who does wear armor is going to be overpowered. So what do you do? V8 made small amounts of armor very powerful to quickly reward players for actually wearing armor, incentivize using it more, makes the game look good, I get it. But then... To address the problems that this creates, V9 is just throwing up its hands and saying, well, if you choose not to wear armor, congratulations, you get armor anyway, just passive armor for warriors. This veers really close to turning Ampguard into one of those dreaded hit point LARPs. Hear me out. Ampguard is special because, despite having a robust ability and magic system, it's not a hit point LARP. Your movements have to be precise and deliberate. The combat is action-packed because of how quickly death can happen. V9's answer to the armor system problems is antithetical to what makes Ampguard great. But I'm not here just to rant or to put down hardworking game designers. I understand this choice, and I'm here to give constructive feedback. So let's construct a system that I call self-balancing armor. To look at what this means, let's look at how other proficiencies are balanced. If I'm a warrior and I'm using a longsword, am I better than warriors who choose not to use a longsword? Of course not. I use a longsword, so you'll use a shield. And now to get around your shield, I'll use Florentine, two swords, or a, a flail, or I can go find someone with an ability that destroys your shield, like any level one archer. We'll describe this sort of rock, paper, scissors that's going on as counterplay. At level 1, every player has some form of counterplay with every proficiency. Except, in V8, for armor. This is the core of the problem. Armor proficiency is available to many classes at level 1, but it more than doubles your survivability, and almost no class can effectively counter it. And armor-related abilities in V8 and V9 ensure that no one ever really gets counterplay at higher levels. Do you want to overcome armor wearers with engulfing effects? Nope. Do you want to destroy the armor with abilities that specifically say they're armor-destroying? Oh, sweet summer child, how dare you think that your abilities should actually do what they say they do? To get us started on what self-balancing armor would even look like, let's take a look at earlier editions of Ampguard and see what we can learn. Earlier editions of Ampguard had multi-point weapons. That's weapons that did two or more damage in a single swing. Now, this led to players shouting numbers as they swing, and it made the game feel like a hit point LARP, so I'm not actually recommending that we go back to that system. But let's take a look at what it did for the game. If you were swinging a two-point weapon, and somebody had one point of armor, the weapon would go right through the armor like you weren't even wearing it. Arrows and great weapons were naturally multi-point weapons, and Barbarian, Bard, Warrior, and Wizard all had abilities that increased weapon damage. So, everyone at level 1 had some form of counterplay against armor. And if you were wearing armor, that was still doing something for you. Using a multi-point weapon was cumbersome, or required you to use some limited ability. So, 
wearing the armor still meant that your opponent had to encumber themselves, but they could kill you in one hit if they really wanted to. So if I'm wearing armor, how do I still win? Well, I could encumber myself by wearing heavier and heavier armor. Now your multi-point weapons aren't as big of an issue. This arms race is counterplay, and that's what we're looking to get back. Now, as I said, shouting numbers and doing math in the middle of a fight, not fun. So I totally get why this system was replaced with armor breaking and armor destroying. But the problem with those abilities is they don't solve the problem. Armor breaking and armor destroying don't do anything to help you against one point of armor, the easiest amount of armor to make and wear. And whether or not armor breaking even works depends on the armor's current point value, including any damage that's already been done to it. So whether your ability even works is up in the air, and the person wearing the armor still has to do complicated math while you're attacking them. Ugh. So how can we make a good system without the math? Let's take a look at the core of the counterplay going on with armor. Broadly, you can break down weapons into two categories, light weapons and heavy weapons. There's weapons that you can swing basically as fast as you can use your arm. Uh, it's just a flick of the wrist and your shot's delivered. These are your longsword, your short sword, your dagger, and your throwing weapons. Then we've got weapons that take two hands, like a greatsword, or significant setup or it's cumbersome to carry around, like a javelin. We'll call these your heavy weapons. Now, you could also break up armor like this. I think we can all agree that a leather jerkin is very different from wearing plate mail or chain mail. So, let's keep the system the same with light armor. Armor has point values, and a hit from a light weapon takes a point off your armor. Great. But how do we represent the extra damage that heavy weapons do without math? Simple. Have heavy weapons, ignore the armor completely. No numbers, no math. If I'm using a heavy weapon and you've got light armor, it goes right through it. Now to counteract heavy weapons, we wear heavy armor. I have to encumber myself using a heavy weapon. So in order to beat my heavy weapon, you need to have armor that physically encumbers you. Your armor can have the heavy rating if it's actually heavy enough to slow you down. Then heavy weapons treat your armor just like any other type of armor. One hit takes off one point. Finally, let's take a look at those point values. In version 8, an armor-breaking weapon will get through plate mail in about four swings. Plate mail is worth six points. Uh, in version 7, a two-point weapon can get through plate mail in about four swings as well. Uh, so instead of doing this complex math while we swing, why don't we just make the top of the armor system four points? It's a lot better than counting irregularly down from six. Voila. Less math for everybody, and the top of your armor scale is less invincible and unbalancing. So now, at level one, light armor is balanced because everyone has some form of counterplay to it, and heavy armor is balanced because it physically slows the wearer down when they're using it. Great. But wait, I hear the rebuttals already. If you make armor less effective, fewer people will wear it, and we want people wearing armor. It makes the game look great. I agree. So how can we keep armor balanced and still get more people to wear it? Here's where I'm going to take a page from V9. We need to lower the barrier to entry for armor. For starters, let's get rid of any reference to period materials. I know this will make some people upset. I used to be one of those people. But trust me, let's just follow along. You'll like where this goes. When you rate armor, the first point comes from just representing armor. Does it look like you're wearing armor? That means aluminum, that means pickle barrel, heck if you want it even means cardboard covered in tinfoil. Anything where somebody looks at them and yeah, that's armor. One point. Great. The second point comes from making it look good. That's your superbly stitched or inlaid gambesons, your heavily tooled leather, or, you know, extra embellishments like riveted chainmail or 14 gauge heavy metals. Whatever. You put extra effort into making or wearing your armor so the game looks better for it. Bam. That's your second point. 
Then your third and fourth points come from how cumbersome the armor is. Rigid, does it stop you from moving? And heavy, is it heavy enough to meaningfully impede you? If your armor is really physically heavy, that's how it gets the heavy property that I described earlier. Now finally, what about a player who wants to engage with the entire armor system? Say they really want the heavy property, but they're physically unable to wear armor that heavy. Or maybe they just can't afford it. How do we get Amp Guard to be as accessible as it possibly can be? Well, you don't just get armor breaking from proficiencies. You also get it from abilities. So, to be balanced, heavy armor should work the same way. I'm going to create a new ability called Mithril. Mithril gives you plus one point value to any armor worn, and if your armor is made out of metal, whether or not it's heavy, it gets the heavy property. Just like Fantasy Mithril, you can wear lighter armors like aluminum or Japanese weave chainmail, and still get the heavy property and interact with the entire scale. Of course, if you were wearing heavy plate mail, then your armor was rated at four points before you took the ability, so you can get all the way up to five. And there you have it. Everyone's happy. Somebody who wants to use lighter materials and interact with the armor system can get all the way up to four point heavy armor, and somebody who wants to physically encumber themselves has an even higher upper limit than that. It's a win-win. So, to recap, armor is rated one to four, and weapons that are encumbering to use, or have special abilities with them, will go right through armor like it's not there. But armor that is heavy enough to be encumbering will stop those weapons. Then there's a high level ability that allows you to get that heavy property without having physically encumbering armor like that. Now everyone has counterplay against armor starting at level 1, and all of your abilities work, and you know whether they're going to work as soon as you see the armor. There's links to a detailed description of this system and other development documents available in the description of this video. I hope you check out my other videos. I'm Herrick the Mildly Perturbed, and this has been Putting It Mildly.